on satellite, on freeview, on cable, on radio, on mobile, on the web and around the world. This is First at Nine on Other Varana 24-7. Making headlines first at nine, new revelations. Minister Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca says he's ready to testify against former Army Commander Jagat Jayasuriya. <laughs> Sri Lanka security. Prime Minister pledges that foreign military will have no place in Sri Lanka. I state clearly that Sri Lankan government does not make our bases available to foreign countries. Strengthening ties. Indian External Affairs Minister meets President Sirisena. Ban on polythene use. Polythene ban comes into effect from today. Polythene manufacturers not happy. And in international headlines, Kenya to redecide. Supreme Court announced Kenya's presidential election results, orders fresh elections within 60 days. Live across Sri Lanka, this is First at Nine on Other Than 24-7. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mahesh Johnny. Our broadcast tonight on this day, the 1st of September 2017, begins with the news of the ban on polythene. A central environmental authority says that the ban on selected polythene items will be enforced from today. The chairman of the central environmental authority said that those who disregard the ban will be brought to book following the issuance of the relevant gasset notification at midnight yesterday. Many consume polythene and plastic products due to cost effectiveness and the ease of use, yet at a cost to the environment. According to the central environmental authority, the amount of waste disposed by one person per day is more than 7 kilograms. In such a backdrop, manufacturing, distribution and the use of lunch sheets, shopping bags, grocery bags and polystyrene food containers are banned from today. According to the Central Environmental Authority, those who break the rule will be subjected to a maximum fine of 10,000 rupees and a maximum jail term of two years. <laughs> We kindly request your contribution towards an environment without polythene. In addition, the cabinet paper highlights that polythene used for decorations at functions are also included in the ban and is considered illegal. The chairman of the Polythene Manufacturers and Recyclers Association, Anur Vijaytunga, however says, although the ban comes into effect from today, they hope the government will give a grace period until next January for the ban to come into effect holistically. Around 40,000 people are employed in this industry and around 300,000 depend on it. The industrialists were not consulted when making those decisions. They are going to ban polythene without providing an alternative. We continuously requested a grace period of four months. I think this was discussed in the cabinet and I saw in papers that president had asked them to grant a grace period. In the cabinet press, they clearly stated that legal action wouldn't be taken until January. Shop owners and consumers also expressed their views on the issue. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, All Island Canteen Owners Association said that they are forced to increase the price of a packet of food by 10 rupees due to the cost of the new packaging introduced to replace conventional lunch sheets. They introduced a new lunch sheet at 7 rupees and 50 cents. With that cost, how can we give a packet of food for the old price? We have got an alternative, however, it is not conducive for gravy. They should stop the ban immediately. They should hold a discussion with us before January, and if not, we will increase the price of a packet of food by 10 rupees. <laughs> Visiting Indian Minister of External Affairs, Sushma Suraj says the government of Sri Lanka can always count on continuous Indian support. The External Affairs Minister arrived in the country to attend the Indian Ocean Conference and made the remarks when she called on President Maitripala Sirisena at the President's official residence in Colombo today. 
visiting Indian Minister of External Affairs Sushma Swaraj and President Maitri Pala Sirisena held discussions on issues related to the Indian Ocean Conference, which is currently being held in Colombo. Minister Sushma Swaraj, who is the vice chairman of the conference, said India extends fullest cooperation to the countries in the Indian Ocean region to ensure the security, peace and stability of the Indian Ocean, which is the most important supply route for goods and energy needs. She said India assures its neighbours that its vision for Indian Ocean region is to preserve its organic unity while advancing cooperation. The President and the Indian External Affairs Minister exchanged views on the ongoing and proposed joint ventures and projects. Indian Foreign Secretary S. Jai Shankar and High Commissioner Taranjit Singh Sandhu were also present during the meeting. Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe says the government's development plan for the next three years will be revealed under the auspices of the president next Monday. He made the remarks today at a function hosted at the Malambay Divisional Secretariat. We will increase the political strength of women and we are implementing a new system to this end. At present, we are in the process of checking its defects and hope to rectify any major issues if there are any. We will increase the female representation up to 25%. That is why we postponed the provincial council election for another year, so there will be female representation at provincial council. We are also trying to build a strong economy. Meanwhile, yesterday, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe said that Sri Lanka will not enter into military alliances with any country or make the country's bases available to foreign nations. Addressing the second Indian Ocean Conference, the Premier added that the country is in the process of deepening the foreign trade agreement with India to enable greater economic cooperation. The conference, themed peace, development and prosperity, is attended by Indian Minister of External Affairs Sushma Swaraj, Vice President of the Seashells Vincent Meriton, and the Singaporean Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan. Sri Lanka will offer a competitive platform for manufacturing and services. Let me refer to Sri Lanka's decision to develop its major seaports, especially the Hambantota port, which some claim to be a military base. I state clearly that Sri Lankan government does not enter into military alliances with any country or make our bases available to foreign countries. Only the Sri Lankan armed forces have the responsibility for military activities in our ports and airports. We are also working with foreign private investors on the commercial development of our ports. We already have free trade agreements with India and Pakistan. We are in the process of deepening our FTA with India to enable greater economic cooperation. We will finalize the FTA with Singapore then conclude similar trade agreements with other countries in the Bay of Bengal region. We are also negotiating an FTA with China. Furthermore, Sri Lanka is also entitled to EU's concession granting GSP plus facilities. Following the conference, Indian Minister of External Affairs Sushma Swaraj had an audience with Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe at Temple Trees with the presence of Ministers Sagala Ratnayaka and Tilak Marapana. <laughs> A fatal accident claimed the lives of three members of the same family in Bhattukedra, Ratnapura. A couple and their elder son from Ampara succumbed to death while on their way to Colombo to attend a wedding. This tragic accident took place at around 11.50 last night when a car travelling from Ampara to Colombo collided with a cab on the opposite direction. During the incident, an elderly couple along with their son and daughter-in-law were in the car. The elderly couple and their son lost their lives on the spot. The daughter-in-law, who was admitted to the Ratnapura General Hospital, was later transferred to the Colombo National Hospital. A passerby recorded the recovery efforts on a mobile phone soon after the accident. According to the police, the three people who were killed were identified as 80-year-old Thondrage Gunapala, his wife, 60-year-old Surya Rachige Pushpa Ranjani, and their son, 40-year-old Thondrage Susamtha. Five others who were in the cab were admitted to the Ratnapura Hospital for treatment. The police suspect that the driver of the car would have fallen asleep at the wheel. 
The newly appointed Minister of Justice, Talata Atukoralu, met the Chief Prelate of the Malwatu Chapter at the Malwatu Mahavihara in Kandy this morning. The newly appointed Minister of Buddha Sasana, Gamini Jayavikrama Pereira, also visited the Chief Prelates of Malwatu and Askiri Chapters yesterday. Newly appointed Minister of Justice, Talata Atukoralu, called on the Chief Prelate of the Malwatu Chapter, Most Venerable Tibatwave Shri Sumangala Thera, at the Malwatu Temple in Kandy this morning. <laughs> Meanwhile, the new Minister of Buddha Sasana, Gamini Jayavikrama Pereira, yesterday visited the Chief Prelate of the Malwath Chapter and received blessings. Following which, the Minister called on the Chief Prelate of the Askiriya Chapter, Most Venerable Varakagura Sri Nyanvathanathera. Welcome back everyone. It is the belief of parliamentarian Angajan Ramanathan that people in Jaffna will never let another civil war manifest within the country. UPFA parliamentarian Ramanathan voiced his views at a media briefing of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party held in Colombo today. Minister S. V. Disanayaka meanwhile says there is no obstruction for the election commission to hold elections. <laughs> There is no obstruction to the Elections Commission to hold elections. A few gassets are needed to be printed. That's it and it will be done. In the meantime, parliamentarian Angajan Ramanathan responded to questions raised by journalists about fears of an LTTE revival in the north. I believe that is just a hoax. Because uh, I'm very uh, confident that the people of Jaffna will not never again let another war come. It must have been some anti-government forces uh, that... So right now they are at a position where they are sitting with the government and negotiating for their necessities. In Colombo, Nukegoda, there was a shooting against the police. That doesn't say anything about terrorism. Young boys, misguided youth, like any other place, going into, you know, illegal uh, or bad habits. So I hope that... The people from the south also understand it and place a trust on each other so that we could move forward. This is no, not, not an attack on the army person. This was an attack on the police and that was an individual. Not a, that was a coincidence, not, not, nothing with an agenda. Minister of Regional Development Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca today made an admission saying that he has proof of crimes allegedly perpetrated by General Jagat Jayasuriya and he stands ready to testify in court. He made the revelation during a media briefing at the Minister of Regional Development. Minister of Housing and Construction Sajid Premadasa, however, voiced a contradictory view, vowing that the government will protect General Jayasuriya. <laughs> When I was directing battle operations, I held all battalions under my command, deviating from usual norms. General Jagat Jayasuriya was the commander of Waunia back then. His duty was to oversee the bunker line in Waunia. At the time, I received complaints that he was engaging in various crimes. I believe he continued doing so even after he was appointed army commander. I have information about those crimes. If proper legal proceedings are initiated, I will stand as a witness and elaborate on those crimes. When he was being praised, he didn't say he was working under my orders. We didn't order murder and crime. Minister of Housing and Construction, Sajid Premadasa, however, had this to say. Our government stands with General Jagat Jayasuriya. We will do all we can to prove his innocence. As a government, we will not allow any harm to befall on General Jayasuriya, but also all other war heroes. With the 20th Amendment to the Constitution being rejected by some provincial councils, a few parliamentarians express views on the subject as well as local government elections during the same day. The draft bill is presented to the provincial councils for their consideration on the matter. A provincial council's acceptance or rejection is not of consequence. The parliament has the ability to pass these amendments with a two-thirds majority. We expect to include all proposed ideas by provincial councils into the draft bill. The democracy is therefore strengthened through the 20th Amendment. 
The government of good governance is afraid of elections. They should dissolve the Eastern Provincial Council, North Central Provincial Council, and the Sabragamu Provincial Council by next month and give people their right to vote. UNP and UPFA members who supported the government knows two-thirds of the country's population is with former President Mahindra Rajapaksa and the joint opposition. They don't want to hold elections. They only want to postpone it because the majority of the people of this country are disappointed about the current government. Although we oppose the amendments related to this bill, we are ready for elections even tomorrow. We also oppose the stripping of government officers' election rights. We are not afraid of elections. Former President of the Sri Lanka Medical Council, Professor Carlo Fonseca, states that the government should be chased away if they fail to abolish CITEM. He made this statement speaking to the media after visiting the Valicata prison today to look into the welfare of the convener of the Medical Faculty Action Committee, Ryan Jala. Dr. Ryan, Dr. Ryan has been arrested for being the voice to protect the rights of 8,000 students of the government medical faculties. Many powerful politicians, including Susil Premajayante, Partly Champika, Dayasiri Jayasekara, Dilan Pereira, and Ranjan Ramanayaka, justifies this battle. Sitem's M stood for management and later it was changed to medicine. I was appointed as the president of SLMC in 2012. I have sent a private and a confidential letter to Mahindra Rajapaksha that if Saitam continues, it will lead to a situation as experienced now. I know that Mahindra Rajapaksha will not object to my proposals. There was no necessity for me to be afraid of him. He has always been kind to me. I did not have the freedom to speak when I was holding a position at SLMC. Today, I do not have such a responsibility. If this government continues to take the side of the wealth, then the government should be toppled. I will spend my last days fighting towards justice. Meanwhile, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa responded to Professor Carlo Fonseca's claims of him being given a letter by the professor. Meanwhile, demanding the government to abolish CITEM, the anti CITEM students and people's movement continued their hunger strike for the 12th day today in front of the Fort Railway Station. Many representatives of the teachers and the principals association joined in support of the measure. A fuel bowser toppled in Ingiria today when the driver failed to control the vehicle with the incident having an impact in the water supply as well. Let's now take a look at that story and more making news across Sri Lanka. The fuel bowser toppled early this morning along the Ratnapura Panadura Road, heavily obstructing traffic. Due to fear of leaked fuel contaminating the Kalu River, the National Water Supply and Drainage Board temporarily shut down the water purification unit at Horana and suspended water supply to areas including Moratua, Panadura and Horana for a few hours. CCTV cameras recorded footage of an individual breaking into a house in Colombo and escaping by scaling a wall. According to police, the individual was linked to 78 robberies over the past four years. Police added that the culprit had been in prison for a number of crimes and had later been released for good behaviour. The theft of a collection box at the Biagama Siembalape Satara Mahadevale was also recorded on CCTV camera. The culprit had arrived on the pretext of getting a ceremony conducted and had made off with the collection box when the shaman left the site. A wasp attack on estate workers harvesting tea in an estate in Bogavantalava 
left eight people hospitalized with one in critical condition. A lorry transporting cattle from Erawur to Akurana toppled near the Naula Koholambala army camp. The lorry had been illegally transporting 38 heads of cattle, exceeding the licensed number of 20, of which 11 had died. <laughs> Thirty-four people were killed last night in Mumbai when a six-storey building collapsed in India. Twelve others were rescued and disaster relief personnel have almost cleared the area. The building, situated in a densely populated area of Mumbai, was believed to be about 117 years old. International media report the building was declared unsafe in 2011. However, many of the residents continued living there. The cause of the collapse was not known, but the disaster followed several days of torrential downpours and floods. In one of our headline stories, Kenya's Supreme Court today annulled the results of last month's presidential election and ordered a new one within 60 days. The ruling citing irregularities makes Kenya the first African country to invalidate a presidential election. Kenya's election commission had declared incumbent president Uhuru Kenyatta the winner by a margin of 1.4 million votes. The opposition argued that the commission's computer system had been hacked to manipulate the results. Reading the decision to annul the presidential election results, the country's chief justice said the election had not been conducted in accordance with the constitution. Following the ruling, opposition supporters were seen celebrating outside the court building as well as in opposition strongholds. <laughs> Sri Lankan Airlines issued a statement a short while ago notifying the public of a fake airline survey currently circulating on the internet and social media, including messenger apps citing free ticket offers by Sri Lankan Airlines. The statement emphasizes that this is not a promotion by the airline. The airline also advises public to not access any sites that are not directly linked to the Sri Lankan Airlines website. Also in business news, Moody's Investors Service says that the outlook for Sri Lanka's banking system is negative with both assets, quality and profitability under pressure with macroeconomic risks. Moody's Vice President and Senior Credit Officer Sri Khan Waldamani says the economy will only see a modest growth rebound as the government's fiscal constraints continue to limit public investment and private spending despite strong goods and services exports. Moody's conclusions are contained in in its just released banking system outlook Sri Lanka macroeconomic risk from weak fiscal positions and deteriorating banking assets quality underpin negative outlook which assess uh, which assesses five key factors In sports, the fate of Sri Lanka is now in the hands of the West Indies as the side could not muster a win in the last one-day international against India to gain automatic qualification for the upcoming Cricket World Cup. Sri Lanka needs two wins against India in the five-match series. However, with yesterday's defeat in the fourth one-day international, the Lions couldn't qualify for the World Cup on their own merit and has to rely on the results of the West Indies. Top eight teams in the ICC ODI rankings are directly eligible for the 2019 World Cup. According to the ODI rankings, Sri Lanka are currently on 87 bonus points and occupies 8th place, while the West Indies are placed 9th on 78 bonus points. West Indies have six more one-day internationals to play with the first coming against Ireland, followed by five-match series against England. If West Indies win all six matches, they will bump Sri Lanka down to ninth spot. West Indies have to lose at least one match in their remaining six matches for Sri Lanka to gain automatic qualification. Also in cricket, Sri Lankan fast bowler Lasit Malinga says that the loss of a generation in the Sri Lanka cricket team is a contributory factor in the national team's current dip in form. He made these remarks at a media briefing following yesterday's defeat to India. It is my personal opinion that we lost one generation of players. If not for that, we won't get such an inexperienced international team. I think many players in the current team haven't played enough ODIs. That is why we could not overcome tough situations. 
I came back following a 19-month injury layoff. I couldn't perform well in the India tour. No matter how experienced I am, if I cannot live up to my team's expectations, it's no use of me staying in the team. If not, I should make a decision depending on my health. If I cannot live up to expectations, I'm happy to leave. A very good evening and welcome to the Weather Centre. Starting off with your temperatures, the evening holds a mixed bag as 20 to 33 degrees Celsius is expected to prevail over the next 24 hours. Thunder showers will occur at most parts of the island with temporarily localised strong winds also expected. Showers also can be expected in the western, southern, Saburagamu and central provinces. That's it from tonight's Weather Centre and let's now take a look at your city by city forecast. As we are at the end of the working week, it's time for the good story. Well, this week we don't have to look further. Today's story revolves around an unexpected response from Hollywood when two Sri Lankan fans underwent cyberbullying. Remember Sri Lanka's version of Comic-Con uh, that took place last week? Uh, Amaya Surya Peruma and fellow cosplayer Seshani Kure, who dressed up as Wonder Woman for the recent Comic-Con event in Colombo, were shocked to find themselves being the target of demeaning online memes, objectification and body shaming. Their fellow fans, however, sprang to support them, reporting each offending meme. Now, a tweet of support by a complete stranger went viral, and that's how the story found its way to Hollywood, and which Wonder Woman herself, portrayed by actress Gal Gadot and director of the Wonder Woman film, Patty Jenkins. Now, she tweeted out this morning saying, Looking amazing, ladies. The Sri Lankan fans felt not just thrilled, but also deeply touched by the duo's encouraging words. Now, their case sparked a wider online debate on the issue of online bullying. Speaking to BBC, Amaya said that she thought the entire episode was a good thing, especially that it went viral, because if not, it would have just been another case of cyberbullying. And that is a part of your world tonight right here on Other Than a 24-7. We will return tomorrow first at 9 with Catherine and Shang. Be sure to join us then. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night.